Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today we're going to talk about getting the best image quality out of our friend, the Nintendo GameCube. First, a quick shout out to a guy named Cal. He was cool enough to hook me up with this Japanese Orange Spice GameCube a while back, and he totally deserves a shout out for it. Now, uh, the short answer to all this is component cables. That's the best you can do, hands down. However, the situation is a tad more complicated than that, so if you're curious and you want to see all the different cables compared to each other, etc., stay tuned. Now, uh, so, when it comes to image clarity and, uh, and video quality and just what the video game looks like, a lot of people will go, Oh, you're talking about the graphics. You don't think the graphics are good enough. Fuck you. Here's the thing. Graphics, resolution, and video clarity are three completely different things. And for some reason, they get twined together as one totally interchangeable term. They are not. They are three very different things. And I'll, I'll prove that to you later in the video, but I'll give you an example up front. Now, graphics are what the character is rendered like in the console. So, for example, let's say we're playing Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube. Mario is the graphic. What he looks like is the same regardless of what type of cable you have connected to the console. It, has, it is rendering him the same way. But, depending on what kind of cable you have connected, you can see him more clearly or more vibrantly. Now, it's not like if you hook up the worst cable, which would be an RF cable, if you connect that to the console, it's not like Mario goes from being a 3D rendered image to being like a 2D image. It doesn't work that way. So, uh, the graphics never change. It's just that there's a lot of shit in between the character and you seeing them based on the cable you've connected. So the idea is to get different cables because each one will wipe away a certain amount of fog and noise and shit in between to let you see them as vibrantly as they are meant to be seen. So the first option, which is what we're going to go through now, is RF. This is worthless. You would have to go out of your way to use it. It looks terrible. Don't ever get it. Next up is composite. Now this is, you know, the yellow, red, and white one. This is the one that most people are familiar with because it's what came with the console. However, it is highly not recommended. It looks terrible, as I will show you later in this video. But, yeah, it's, I know a lot of people have it because it's cheap and it's there, but don't use it. Seriously don't use it. You can get even the next upgrade for virtually nothing, which is S-Video. Now, S-Video is pretty cool in general. It is also the most popular upgrade for the GameCube, at least in North America, because it's very affordable and it's a big step up over composite. However, compared to some of the future options, not nearly as good. So, yeah, it, you might settle for S-Video based on your budget. I'm just presenting you guys with all the information and then you guys can do what you want with it. Next up is RGB SCART. And this is where it starts to get really complicated with the GameCube, and you can blame Nintendo for that. Now, RGB SCART is a great format. Uh, in North America, we never really got it. it. It never came out here. And it was awesome, now that we're learning about it, in the late 80s and throughout the 90s, a lot of the consoles used it, and it looks amazing. The image clarity is so good, even though the resolution capabilities, frankly, aren't that high. It doesn't matter. But our North American TVs never had it. So we, we, don't, we only get to take advantage of it through, like, scalers and stuff. But, in the case of the GameCube, Nintendo made it very complicated. Uh, Nintendo decided intentionally to disable it from all North American and Japanese units. We can't use RGB SCART. Sucks for us. But Europe gets to use it. Australia gets to use it. So it sounds like they won, right? They get RGB SCART, and it's the best of those analog formats, right? Yes, best of the analogs, but not the best option, because next up is Component. Now, Component looks beautiful on the GameCube. It really looks good, but there's some problems. <laughs> uh, first up is that, well, they screwed us on RGB SCART, but they screwed Europe and Australia on Component. Not only were the cables never released there, but Nintendo went out of their way to make sure that all of the PAL versions of the games disabled it. Wow. Now, see, the component cables will give you the image clarity of RGB SCART, but they will also offer you double the resolution. See, they reach the same image clarity point, the cables do, 
but then Component offers you the next bump up in resolution, which RGB SCART is not capable of. That's the difference between those two specific things, RGB, uh, between resolution and image clarity. You'll see. I'll prove it to you towards the end of the video. But like I said, Europe, you guys don't have that option. Even if you import the cables, it'll work on your machine, but your software intentionally disables it. So unless you're super loaded uh, and you're European or Australian, you would have to import you know, NTSC versions of games and NTSC consoles and the cables. It's a, it would be a huge hassle. In North America, fortunately, you don't have to deal with the issue of the games not supporting it. Almost every single one of them does. They almost, I mean, they'll all work with the cables, but most of them will also give you the enhanced resolution, and it looks so good. But the cables are extremely uncommon. They were only released widely in Japan and had a very limited release in North America. As a result, go check eBay. They are stupidly expensive, like 200 bucks. I am so glad I bought a set back in the day when they were much cheaper. Uh, so that is my recommendation if you can afford it because it looks great, but I completely get why people don't jump on that. So what's the next best option? Are you saying that if I'm European, I should get RGB SCART? Yeah, you probably should. Are you saying if I'm an American or Canadian, I should get S-Video? No, actually, that's not what I'm saying, unless you want to stick with authentic GameCube hardware. The next best option at that point is, I'm sure you've all thought of it, this, the Wii. Now, I don't like the Wii. I'm very on record for that. I don't apologize for it, but it's not really the subject of this video. The Wii offers GameCube backwards compatibility. And you'll know if you have the right version, because there's three different versions of the Wii. Make sure you know that. You'll know immediately if you have the right one, because it'll have a panel on it with four controller ports. If it has that, it can play GameCube games. Now, unlike the GameCube, the Wii has super cheap component cables. And no, they aren't interchangeable. I wish they were, but they're not. Um, and it offers you the progressive scan capabilities. However, there are some negatives. One of them is that it doesn't support action replay. Maybe you don't care about that, whatever. You could perhaps mod the console and it would work and you wouldn't give a shit. The next one up is that it doesn't support the Game Boy Player. Now, the Game Boy Player was an add-on for the GameCube that allowed you to play original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance cartridges. If you have the component cables, you can also play them in 480p, and they look great. Again, maybe you don't care about that for whatever reason. That is fine. So you're like, well, I don't care. I just want the good image quality out of the actual GameCube games. That's awesome. That's good. However, this is the one that most people don't know, the, game, uh, the Wii's comp uh, component signal is not actually as good as the GameCube's. It has extra noise in the video signal. As a result, doesn't look as good. It's not a huge difference, but it does exist. If you don't believe me, feel free to Google it. There are side-by-side -side comparisons. I'm going to show you them myself. However, still images uh, prove it a little bit better than active motion video. Honestly, most people wouldn't really care, but it is something I think you need to know. So, uh, and I know some people are going to bring this up. This is the Wii to HDMI. You, yes, you could stick this in the back of your Wii and you could connect it via HDMI. And what you need to know about that is that this is not a miracle thing that gives you high definition. This is a component cable in a different shape. Nothing changes. It's just a convenience thing. Just to be able to plug into an HDMI port. You don't suddenly get the, the 1080p out of it. It doesn't work that way. Uh, and for the record, if you're thinking like, do I have to do all that? Can I just take, you know, like composite cables and stick them in a scaler and just go composite to HDMI and get like the full 1080p? Fucking no, it doesn't work that way. I can't tell you how many people ask me that question. Can I just stick the composite cables in the scaler and then I get the, the upgraded image? No, it doesn't fucking work that way. So you don't think that's an option. I mean, you could do it, but it will look like shit. The only place composite cables belong is a fucking trash can. Now, there's a, if you are going to stick with the GameCube's actual hardware, and this is, of course, all up to you guys, there are some things you need to know. On the back, you'll see, potentially, that there's two ports. Now, if you have two ports, one of them will say digital AV out, and the other will say analog AV out. If you have that, it means your GameCube is capable of supporting the component cables. Um, I know European units will have that port sometimes, but they can't really take advantage of it, so I don't know why it's on there. Um, but in the case of North American units, it means you can't. However, Nintendo stripped the digital AV out port after about a year or two of production. They only went with the uh, analog AV out. So if you only see one port on there, S-Video is the best your machine can possibly do. Unless it's European, then you get RGB SCART. However, the, the, on the plus side, actual GameCubes are super cheap. 
So if you want to get one with the, the component out port, you can do that for basically nothing. And I, and I know people are going to ask about this. How about third-party alternatives? Are there third-party component cables we can get? No. Uh, unfortunately, at this point in time, those still don't exist. Uh, apparently, no one made them back in the day, and as of now, no one has done it yet. Partially, I think I've been told the reason is that the component cables have a special kind of lockout chip inside of them that communicates with the GameCube, enabling or disabling the port. Um, and apparently no one has either been able to replicate or has not decided to put the effort into replicating that. So there you go, uh, you can't necessarily do that. So now, at this point, now that you guys have all the facts, I'm just going to go ahead and show you some footage of all the different, uh, the same game being played through all different versions, different cables, so you guys can see firsthand the difference between resolution, graphics, and image clarity. We're going. So uh, the game I chose was Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Now up in the upper left corner you'll always see what kind of format we're connected with. This is of course composite and it looks extremely fuzzy. You see that jump to S video there. Now it's still the same resolution, nothing's changed, it's just a little bit more vibrant. You know, the, the contrast and the colors are separated so you get a nicer image. But when you go up to RGB SCART you can see that there's more of an explosion of color. Again, the resolution has not changed. The graphics have not changed. But now we have more image clarity, but now we're going to jump to double the resolution. Now this is component through the Wii. Now this looks really good, but it's not quite as good as the uh, GameCube component cable, which we'll see right here. Now you may not know from just that jump, you'd have to do a side-by-side -side comparison, but trust me, it does exist. It's just not super noticeable. Again, this is what I recommend, you know, if you can afford it or get your hands on it. But now, just for the sake of experiment, I did this. This is the Wii U HD remake of the exact same game. Now you can see the benefits of enhanced resolution on top of the already same existing graphics. Jump back down to the GameCube version. Same graphics, it's just that you've taken away the resolution, you've taken away the image clarity. And now what I'm going to do is show you the same title screen, again, through all these formats. So you can see changing the cables really does make a difference. And uh, that S-Video one is what you're probably going to use if you, that's all you can afford in North America. This is what you're probably going to use, RGB SCART, if you're in Europe. But if you get a Wii, this is the jump you can make. Now, I, I do recommend this to most people because that's just a financial option. But if you can get this, man, if you can get the GameCube cables, this is the way to go. This is the best option. Except for, of course, you know, full-on HD remakes and re-releases. But, you know, that's not using original hardware. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped you out. And uh, I'll see you all later.